Hello, Bees Bladers, and welcome newcomers to the channel. Thank you to my supporters on Patreon and my engaged subscribers that hit the like button and comment on the regular. I really appreciate that, you guys. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Bees Blades and look at all the cool stuff in the description of this video. There's some really sweet discount codes and affiliate links to knives, sharpening supplies, and knife maintenance. 100% of any kickback I may get from discount codes goes straight to giveaways. So if you're going to buy something or check it out, it might as well go back to you guys, right? Right. So this is the Cold Steel Code 4. Look at that bad boy. So I'll give you a quick look up, look up, close up, close up, look up of the whole knife and all the sides. And if you guys remember, this is my brother's knife. And when he bought it, he gave it to me to unbox. And he's been using this knife every day on the farm, cutting... Here's a chance for a screenshot before I forget. But he's up there. He's been up at the farm cutting and scraping everything you can imagine. He even lost this thing for a week and then found it sitting on the electric meter. He had, it had rained a couple days. He had pretty much given up, didn't even tell me. And then he found it on the electric meter and it was covered in water. And he sent me a picture and he was flipping out because he was so excited that he found it. But you'll want to hear his opinions and my opinions throughout this video. So hang tight. But if you want to take a screenshot, there's a good shot of it. And here's the other side of it for you. That is a sharp knife. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> anyway, so let's run through the Super 7. Fit, finish, comparisons, action, ergos, opinions, and specs. Maybe not in that order. Now, the specs, they are mine. I've double, triple checked them. I'm not going to take forever going through them, but I will zip through them. And nice and close here, yeah, very nice. Um, that way you guys can, you know, if you want, take it for, take it or leave it. So your weight is 4.15 ounces. Your overall length from a tip to tip is 8.5 inches. Your blade length is 3.5 inches with a cutting edge of 3.37. Your blade thickness is 0.132 and you got a nice compound grind right here, very nice. Your thickness behind the edge is 0.014. And then up here at the front, where you have a flat grind is 0 0.023 on that secondary grind. So this is CPM S35VN, as you can see uh, right there, right there. And this is a Tanto blade. Some people say Tanto, whatever, whatever makes you happy. And this is a nice hollow grind. Yeah, boys and girls, that's a hollow grind right there. Nice satin. Um, your handle length is 5.1 inches. And let's see, your handle width is 1.15. Your carry profile, and that's closed, is 1.58. So from here to here is 1.58 inches. And your handle thickness is 0.35. Look at that. Would y'all look at it? Look how thin that is. I mean, just look at it. Your handle is, uh, what is it, 6061 T6 aluminum, whatever 6061 is. And you got a nice gray finish. And this is a right and left hand carry. It comes with... Two pocket clips, depending on which side you want to carry it on. So that makes this a completely ambidextrous knife. How about that? I mean, how about that? Um, this is a cold steel, and it has the triad lock, triad, and this is made in Taiwan. So I'll give you an idea of what it looks like thickness-wise. Here is the Tenacious. You can see it's thicker, thicker than the Tenacious by a good margin. Here, where's another one? Here's, here's a... Look at that. That's the uh, Spyderco Para 3. Give you an idea. A lot, lot thinner than the Para 3. Did I say thicker? It is definitely thinner than the Tenacious. And what's another one here? Uh, knife a lot of you guys have is the Civivi Backlash. Look at that. It's thinner than that too. And of course I have to show the uh, AD 20.5. And they are pretty darn close. I mean... Ooh, that is pretty close. What do you think, huh? What do you think? It's pretty darn close, boys. Okay, moving on. Let's, uh, I'm going to throw some up here. That way, if you have one of these knives, you'll have an idea. I'm going to do them pivot to pivot, and I'm just going to run right through them. There's a spider coat Tenacious. And the Spider Co. Manix 2. So there's those two. You can see the blade lengths are, are, are similar as far as lengthwise. And 
Here's a couple more for you. Here's a Spider Co. Para 3. And here is the Concept Main Street full size. Putting all these pivot to pivot. So you can see uh, definitely, I mean, if you're talking about just the flat cutting edge, you know, you're, get, you're getting uh, a little less than some of these and about the same too. So you're not, you're not losing anything there. Here's a couple popular knives that some of you might have. There is the Civivi Praxis. And there is the Civivi Backlash. So how about that? So we'll do two more. We'll do a cold steel. I mean, we got to put another cold steel. I don't have a lot of cold steels. So uh, maybe someone should send me one to check out. Just kidding. Not kidding. All right, there's a cold steel tough light. And here is the, this is not a cold steel. This is Andrew Dimko's AD 20.5. So if you were curious about the size, as far as cutting cutting length, they're about, about the same until you get to the Tanto tip. So there's some food for thought on that. If you're still watching, do me a big favor and hit the like button. Smash, subscribe, and tap all on the bell so you don't miss what's coming up on Bee's Blades, including the giveaway I'm working on right now. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, there's pretty much two ways to open this knife. you got to... Slow, slow roll and a, and a thumb stud. So you got your thumb stud here and you can do that. And then you can slow roll it out like this. That's pretty much your two, two ways of opening it. This is, I'm going to back out just a little bit for you. But this is a very, very strong lock. But man, I'm telling you, once it's out, it is out. Um, it's not going to be drop shutty or anything, and you're going to make sure you have your finger, your index finger, up here when you shut it. Otherwise, you will guillotine, guillotine yourself. And to shut it, you can give it a little, little bit of a flip. It's not going to be drop shutty because of that triad lock action. So you get to this point right here, and it's going to shut on its own whether your finger's in the way or not. See there? So just showing you here one more time. About right there, and it's pa pow so there, there's your action. Open, open it. I can't really do it on camera here without hitting the camera, but there's not going to be any droppiness, but that's not, that's not what this knife is about. This knife is made to work. I mean, I guess you can do a spidey flick with it, but you're going to have to, you're going to have to help it out with a little bit of wrist action. Mm. Try that one more time. And huh, see what I'm saying? So I, that's a sturdy boy right there. So let's look at the fit and finish here. So here's your finish of the blade. And this is, I'm telling you what, this thing, this blade is held up. It's got a little bit of scratches. I thought it would be more scratched up than this. I mean, my brother said he wanted to be careful, but he didn't want to be careful. But then again, this is, this, you know, this is a, a this is a really good knife. This is, you know, a little, not pricey, but for my brother and me. Yeah. When you're talking about 80 bucks, you're talking about, you know, you're talking about some, uh, some money there. For some folks, that's not a lot. For some folks, it is. But here's your finish. And mind you, he said he dropped this like three times on the concrete, three separate times. And the only marks I can see is just right here. And maybe a tiny one right there. So this, this finish is very tough. I was curious if this was going to scratch off, but apparently that's not going to be an issue because this thing, you know, it's been through the ringer. And my brother, you know, after he found his knife and it had set out for a week and had been been in the rain and it was wet when he found it, not a spot of rust on it. So that's a good indication uh, of how stained less this knife is. Um, he did put a couple chips on the edge when he hit metal while cutting stuff, but I'm telling you what, it sharpened right back up. He gave it to me, I sharpened it, and I took it back the same day. And I have to say, this steel is a it is a dream to sharpen. I love to sharpen this S35VN. Man, I like it. I like it a lot. But the blade geometry on this thing is really nice too. It passes through thicker material. And I mean, it's a hollow ground blade, guys. Come on. I mean, what do you, what do you think it's going to do, right? But here's your thumb studs. They're not aggressive at all. Has nice, nice thumb studs. I like to give you guys some close-ups. And then here, here's your grind. Whoa, where are we going here, boys? Sorry, guys. 
Sometimes it doesn't want to cooperate. So it's got a real, really nice grind on it. I mean, I am not a professional sharpener, but I, you know, this was, this was, uh, this was a test. I was like, can I do the Tanto? And man, yes, it, I was impressed. I have to say, and that's impressed with myself, not, not actually how well I did. Um, it does have a sharpening choil right here. There's no forward choil, but you can, you can use this flat area to choke up. But it does have that nice, and it has a really steep plunge grind. Thank you, Cold Steel. Thank you very much. And what do we have here? We had a back spacer. So, you know, it's pretty much enclosed all the way across. See that nice aluminum back spacer that matches the rest of it, which is, that's very nice. No blade play, no lock rock. When this thing is open and locked, you would swear you're holding a fixed blade. And, you know, it's a Cold Steel. That's what they do. They make tough knives. You know, I definitely have it on my wish list to get more. I, I want to try them all. Jeez, what am I saying? But, you know, for now, this is this is the biggest one that I have to try, to try out. And I don't have any complaints about the toughness, that's for sure. And it was easy to disassemble. And it was easy to get centered back up. How's the centering looking here? Looks pretty good. Not too shabby. And as far as the tolerances, look at that. There's not much room in there. I mean, that, that's some pretty tight tolerances, you know, for me. Your, your pivot, you got a T10 for the pivot. And then these are all T6s. Those and those bad boys are all T6s. I'm not sure why they didn't go bigger. You know, go from a T10 to a T6. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a, a T678 aficionado, but I know everyone says, why do you use T6s? And yeah, because it stuff strips. I mean, come on. But overall, the aesthetics they're pretty good i mean it's a pretty nice looking knife but you know for me i don't know the blade to handle ratio is a little off that i don't know that's uh, there's a couple reasons the handle's a little too big for my hand which is you know it's subjective but also the aesthetics just be, just on a personal nitpicky thing just because it just looks like there should be more blade to match the handle that's just me I mean, it does, it does have the look that, hey, pick me up, use me. I've got an attitude. I'm ready to cut something, right? Now, as far as ergos, my hand is about four inches from here to here when, when gripped, and then three and a half from here to here. If, if you measure from the base of my hand to the tip of my middle finger, that's seven and a quarter inches. So now you can, you can compare, and you know how big your hand is compared to mine, and you can decide if this is the size grip for you. But the handle is a little large. Um, I do get a great solid purchase. I mean, it's not going anywhere when in my hand, that's for sure. Um, I found myself when I was cutting stuff, choking up, which may not be the best idea, but I was using this up here. It's just when I'm back here, I, my hand was so far from the cutting edge. I, I don't know. I, I like to be a little closer to my cutting edge when I'm doing push cuts, but that's just me. But it's very comfortable um, other than inside here. Let me see if you guys can see that. Right inside here is a little sharp. Right there. That's just a tad bit sharp on the inside of the scales. Other than that, there's nothing else that feels, you know, objectionable, if you will. You know, closed in the hand, there's, there's no sharp edges. Um, you do have a nice flat spine and you can feel those edges, but they're, they're nothing, that, uh, nothing to write home and complain about. You know, as far as jimping, I always look to see if there is any, I guess technically you would call that jimping, but it, I don't know why it's there. It doesn't really serve a purpose. I mean, if you're really pushing hard, maybe, but if you look here, it doesn't really, those, those little marks, the jimping there doesn't even make contact with my thumb really. And there's none up here, but there's your, there's your uh, cutting grip. I tell you what, this thing, I, it works best for me doing uh, utility cutting. You know, my finger fits right in there, and it, it's great for utility cutting. Other than that, you know, there's no other complaints ergo-wise. Um, when I use it for light everyday stuff, you know, like opening packages or boxes, stuff like that, there's no issues. You know, deployment, I struggle with that. That's what she said. The handle is slick, and my brother brought up a really good point. He's been using it every day, working outside in the sun, and he said every time he would set it down, they go to pick it back up, it'd be too hot to hold from the sun heating it up. He said it happened so many times, he got fed up with it. He said, he said, no, dude, it was too hot to hold. I had to put it back down. And then, you know, 
I'm, my thought is, well, why not put it back in your pocket? Well, that brings me back to Ergo's. I mean, I have to hold it a certain way to open it. I have to literally turn my hand this way so I can get my thumb under. And if you look, I run out of thumb to be able to get it open. See there? I'm not able to open it all the way. So I really have to finagle and concentrate. I have to choke way up and hold it like this so my hand is high enough to open it up with the thumb stud. So you can see here, I have to hold it a certain way to get it to open. And I have to be very cognizant of how I, op how I open it. Other knives, I don't have to concentrate on having my hand contorted to be able to get my thumb up that high. Now, this is, this is just a, a thing, but if this thumb stud were up here closer to the bolster, like up here, maybe I would be able to open it fully a lot easier rather than having to contort my hand. So this is just me. And maybe, maybe it's not like that for other people, but you know, the whole point of this is to tell you my experience. My brother, I asked him the questions and he told me these same things and I hadn't told him anything about how I felt about the knife. And he pretty much matched what I said. And his hands are about the same size as mine. He said, it's just too big. He really likes it, but it's just too big for him. So maybe this is for big guys with bigger hands, uh, or maybe we're just, you know, uncoordinated. And here is, a, a again, a super note of caution. When you close this, if you're going to close it one-handed, if you don't have your finger, your index finger right here went for it to close on, you will cut yourself. So be very careful when you close it. If your finger is down here and you release it, this will come down and it will cut you. Believe me, I know. It, it's done it every time I've had the knife. <laughs> But that's just a, just something to pay attention to. But in and out of the pocket, if you have thicker pants like Carhartts or something like that, um, it would not go into his overalls. I was up there. It was chilly when he first got it. We just bent the clip up a little bit, and that fixed that problem. It has a very, very strong clip. So you can bend that clip up a little bit if you have some thicker pants to get it in. But overall, does it feel like a toy or a tool? Well, what do you guys think? It's a tool, no doubt. But in conclusion, it's a super sturdy knife. You know, the lock's above reproach. The finish is outstanding. The ergos just don't work for me. Uh, you know, they don't just don't flow for my hand size. I feel awkward deploying and closing it, and I have to pay too much attention, you know, to both. Um, this is going to work a lot better for you, maybe. I don't know. Um, I do wish the thumb stud was a little closer to the pivot, just for me. The acoustics are pretty nice. See, sorry guys, I just have a little trouble with this one. The action, you know, it's a triad lock. And you guys have seen me open scores of knives. I just have trouble with this one. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. This thing is a strong workout, workhorse. But if it was my knife and not my brother's and I lost it and I had 80 bucks in credit on Amazon for a knife retailer, would I replace it? No, it's just, it's just not for me personally. But it's a great knife overall. Maybe if you got bigger hands, um, you know, the 80, 20, that that's, that's more my, more my speed. I could even go bigger, you know, I could go bigger than the 80, 20 a little bit, but this guy, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's, maybe there's something else, but that's just, that's just my, my, uh, overall on it. I know some of you guys have this knife or maybe you've been wanting it. Um, if you do have it, how's it been working out for you? You know, does it work? Is it a beast? Let me know. Let the commenting begin. I appreciate all you knife lovers out there. Thanks for coming along for this ride. Thanks for watching. Keep your knives sharp, a band-aid handy, and don't cut yourself.